I'm Brandon Roberts. Welcome to the Pike County Report. With me, as always, is uh, Pike County Judge Executive Wayne T. Rutherford. Judge, we continue to work on our trail system here in the county, and and we continue to make progress. Uh, it's an economic development tool, and I understand we are uh, getting closer every day to seeing this project through. We're just in beginning stages, and I, I say that because the, the economic development in Pike County through, a tr through the trail systems, and I'm talking about completely trail systems. I'm talking about the four-wheeler, ATV, whatever it's called, and I'm talking about the walking trails, the bicycle trails, the dirt bike trails, the horse trails, which we already have in, in Pike County at Pitch Trap Reservoir, and uh, I'm talking about ra uh, uh, rails to trails, which we're working on, which we'll discuss some today. Uh, the most hitting, hidden jewel that we have in Pike County for economic development is, uh, is a trail system. And if you look, all of this, this is just part of the record that we've kept in the last four years in regard to trying to get ready to put a trail system in. To do our planning, do it diligently, to be patient as, as we put it together, put it together so it'll work. Hatfield-McCoy Trail is a model for anybody in the world to follow, no doubt about that. $2.3 million income from just a trail system that goes into the economy. In the United States, it's $133 million, billion, not a million, billion per year of outdoor recreation. So we need, in, in beautiful Pike County, a mountainous Pike County that borders two states, Virginia and West Virginia. And we have done our planning. We have attempted to move this trail system forward. Money has been appropriated. Some of the money has been appropriated before my administration ever came into office. And that money is designated and can be spent only for trail system. And you might ask, well, why have you done all this studies and work and all and nothing been done. It was simple. The Kentucky legislature refused to act and to give, to give the local governments in Kentucky, uh, whatever you want to call it, cover or the ability to go out and acquire easements on property or whatever you, whatever you acquire for use of property. You can do it with, a, with an easement or you can do it with a use agreement of the property. So twice, two times, two times it passed the Kentucky House of Representatives, went on to the Senate of Kentucky, and Senator Williams failed to call it up for a vote. 99 to nothing, ironically, both times. So we, we cannot wait any longer. We have two extensions. We have applied for the third extension on, on a vast amount of money that this county has had designated, designated only for trail system, only for economic development in trail system. So we, we decided that we had to take action. We, we worked with the Skyland Trails under a past state administration of Governor Fletcher's, and they had the Skyland Trail system, and, and that was fine. But that system went northwest from Pike County. It went from, say, Phelps, down to the Belfry area, down to Martin County, down into the other counties of eastern Kentucky. The administration changed, and then it was put on the shelf. Skyland Trail, of course, had some legislation was, that was passed that it, as it had vanished to us, as we set up a trail system, there, there's certain things were packed. A state, a state board was put in on trails and it's still in existing under the Kentucky statutes today. We had uh, one magistrate that was on the Skyland Trails Board, which met at the Ad District until they, they went out of business. Then you had the Jane Bashir, Governor Bashir's wife, and Lieutenant Governor Majardo teaming up to put a trail system in under the Bashir administration. And here we was again, starting out new attempting to get to western Kentucky where they wanted us to get to from the Hatfield-McCord Trail. Pike County sets uh, at the 
in the, and I would say in the center of the trail system of eastern Kentucky because we border West Virginia and Virginia. West Virginia and Virginia, we would be the only county in the Commonwealth who could advertise a trail ride on our trail system, which would go, be a weekend trail ride in three states. The states, the Commonwealth of Kentucky, appropriated no money. This is tough times economically in Kentucky. It's, it's tough times economically, not only in Kentucky, but in our nation and in the world. So no money was ever appropriated for these trail systems that Jane Bashir and, and Lieutenant Governor Majardo proposed. So we have decided, and we didn't want to go alone. So we asked uh, some months ago that the director of our ad, Sandy Runyon, that if she would help coordinate a meeting prior to the Big Sandy ad meeting, and we would sit with our counterparts in Pike, Floyd, Martin, Johnson, and McGolfin, and uh, Letcher, and Knott Counties. And she brought us together. And we said, well, we're, we're, we want to move now to make sure in our counties that we have, have a complete trail system. And I, earlier I gave the list of all of those all the different type trails. So then we, we decided that, and we found out that there was existing, existing coalition of five counties that was put in about two years ago. And those five counties had, in that sense, they was put in two years ago, had taken two more counties in, Knott County and Letcher County that we needed to become a part of this coalition of Bell, Breathitt, Clay, Floyd, Harlan, Johnson, Knott, Lawrence, Letcher, McGolfin, Martin, Owsley, Prairie, Pike, and Wolf. And that 15 counties, that we put a, a, put a, a coalition together. And so we asked for a, another meeting. Judge uh, Benny Ray, no, Denny Ray Noble from Prairie County was gracious enough to come to the the Ad District meeting in Prestonsburg and to talk to us about how, we, how they formed their committee, how we could come part of that coalition, and that all 15 counties in, in mountainous eastern Kentucky, which is, is and we know from, from Judge Thompson who attended the meetings, he attended two of the three meetings. Then we moved on to Louisville during Keiko's meeting some three weeks ago and we, we set another meeting up at the, at, in Louisville at the Gold House where Keiko was meeting. And we brought representatives in from many of the 15 counties. And we, we the county judge executives, and others interested in the trail systems met and decided that, and, and Judge Thompson and Judge Noble led the meeting to, to, to tell this group, we have got to move on our trail system. Judge Thompson, uh, back, uh, he was asked the question, well, Judge, why, why did Knott County get ahead of everybody else in their trail system? And he said, well, I can tell you. When they first put this together, they left Knott County off. And we was blessed because we had a fellow who had helped start the trail system of Hatfield and McCoy who moved to Knott County. And I went to him and said, look, we got this, let's start a trail system. We're even left off of this one that's mentioned. And he said, probably done by a newspaper left our name Knott County off. But he said, we started meeting and look what we do. But we support every county having a trail system. We had looked, and I might, I might add so that the, so the people can understand, the Hatfield-McCoy trail system is not a connected trail system. You know, and I, I, I've known that for some time. I, I get a paper from Beckley, West Virginia every day. And I noticed in that publication recently that uh, in, in McDowell County in West Virginia that they were just talking about becoming part of the system and that they, it, was, it was separate and they would, be, they, would, they would want to join the total system in the future. So that system is a phase system. So it has been decided by the leadership in 15 counties in eastern Kentucky that each county move forward with a, with a trail system. 
that we all get a trail system. Now, on all of these, take horse trails. Most of your counties have the horse trail. We're aware that Pike County has a great horse trail. We have more miles of horse trail than any county in eastern Kentucky, 61 miles in the Fish Trap Reservoir that we control when the hunting season is not in through a contract with the Corps of Engineers and the Kentucky Department of Natural Resources. We apply for a permit, permit, we get it each year. We have a spring horse ride and we have a fall horse ride. Very successful. We're going to talk about that expanding because we, our access point presently at the, for the horse trail in Pike County is the head of Lick Creek next to a county park. Very little parking for the horse trailers. Very little parking. We, we will talk a little bit later in this program on what we're going to do to get more parking. And, and this was it, also a recommendation of Judge Thompson of Knott County, who's been very successful, said that, and, and we looked at data that was put together in regard to the horse trails, and Judge Thompson shared that with us which means that a person in a horse trail does not ride at the same place every time. They, when, when they ride their horses, they want to go to a different trail, or they ride their four-wheelers or ATV, they want to go to a different trail. And so he said, we don't mind because they'll come back to us. They'll come back to us. And, but in regard to the horse trails, uh, we are we have the horse trails in place. Floyd County has the horse trails on Dewey Lake. They already have them. They're established. They have them every year. Owsley County has the oldest horse trail in Kentucky. And it's established. It's there. Then you have the other counties in eastern Kentucky. Knott County has the largest horse trail ride of anywhere in the eastern in central Appalachia. Any place in central Appalachia. Horses and we go to Lexington and we look beside of, I look at, at 60 when we leave Winchester and go in on the back road, as I call it, into Lexington. And you see a sign beside the road that says, Horse Capital of the World. And that's true when you look at thoroughbreds and racehorses. But in fact, Pike County has more horses in Pike County than Fayette County does. Because you can go up and down these creeks and hollows and you see the horse trailer sitting and you see the barn. Because it's been a culture and it's a heritage for the people in central Appalachia to have a horse. A horse to ride for recreation and a horse to work in pasture. That's how they plowed their fields. That's how they fed their family. They did it with a mule or a horse or horses or an ox in past years. So. There's nothing new for us here in eastern Kentucky and in central Appalachia to, to, to have so many horses available and to enjoy this as part of our outdoor recreation. So we are moving to bring that together in regard to our horse trails. And then we move on from the horse trails and Brandon, we move on, we can go to our walking trails. Let's go to the walking trails. Let's go to the Pine Mountain State Park, which Shad Baker is chairman of a committee that put that together. Shad is the extension office in Lancaster County. I attended those meetings back in the early 90s when I was in office. Uh, they've had them at Elkhorn City, they've had them in Lancaster County. That is done, and, uh, and I think that we have uh, we have some, we have maps and stuff showing that the, that trail is a state park. It runs, it connects from Elkhorn City and goes across the Pine Mountain Range to, and hooks in in Lynchburg County to the Kingdom Come State Park and goes from there down to the Tennessee border. So that is the largest linear park. That, that was put in place by, on, a, on legislation by Senator Ray Jones who filed the original uh, the bill that was passed the Senate. The governor, the administ patent administration at that time supported it. And it became the longest trail system in the, in the United States and the second longest one in this hemisphere. The other one was in the country in South America. So, uh, 
so that's that is in place. I understand in talking to Mr. Baker that 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 system already has either easements or use agreements signed with everybody on that trail from El Elkhorn City. And I think you have a map up here. And I and I can show you on the map where that where it goes from the existing Elkhorn City Trailhead and uh, right here. And this is the Pine Mountain State Park, and it goes right on over. But this goes right on into Letcher County, right on, right on into Letcher County, and it goes to the Kingdom Come State Park in Letcher County, and then heads right on down, down to the Tennessee border. So we we are uh, in that walking trail that that is can be listed as a a non motorized vehicle trail. Now we all need to understand that you can't put a motorized vehicle on federal property. You cannot do it. It's against the federal code. It's against the federal guidelines. You cannot do it. So we, we have to keep that in mind, and we have to, that's the reason that we have to have different trails in the county. Pike County is blessed. We are the largest county in land area. We don't have the problem that other counties have. The other counties have problems with their, with their four-wheeler and their ATV trails because of that. Example, Floyd County is having a problem getting around Dewey Lake because of the size and the geographic layout of Floyd County. And they're having trouble getting on, on private property and staying off of federal property. And they have not figured out how to get around Dewey Lake yet. Then you have Owsley County, which Owsley County is two thirds owned by the federal government on the national forest. So they haven't figured out how they can have an, an ATV or four-wheeler trail. Were they the ones, Judge, who were going to no, cross that the river? Is, no, that is Perry County. Perry County is having the same problem. They are a smaller county, and they are having trouble with Buckhorn, with Buckhorn Lake. They, as you just mentioned, they're thinking out of the box. They've even talked about buying a, a, something to put on the water and haul them across till they hit the private property across the lake or across the river or whatever they choose to cross. So <clears throat> we don't have that problem. We, we have vast amount of property at Fish Trap Reservoir that is controlled by the Corps of Engineers and, and, and leased to the state for a dollar a year. And we, we don't, but we don't have the problem the other counties have. So in regard to the, to, to the, those types of, that type of trail, Pine Mountain Trail, which is a walking trail and could be a bicycle trail, could be a bicycle trail. So we, we, uh, we certainly, we certainly want to look out for the walkers. And let me, let me tell you about the Pine Mountain Trail, about that trail again. That trail right there goes into Letcher County, right here, right there. It's a, that trail is a walking trail or bicycle trail. Now, what little I've been on the trail, and it's been years ago before they even upgraded the trail and ever marked it, I was there. It, the, it'd be a problem for the bicycle, in my opinion, to get back onto the mountain. But once you got there, you have an area that you could ride a bicycle. But we have the Pine Mountain, the, the Pine Mountain Trail, and then you, you have the other trail system, which is the Great Eastern Trail. Now we have Paul Hopkins, who attends our meetings that we have on trails in Pike County. He's on our committee. Uh, he's, everybody knows Paul. He's administrator up to our health department. And I know when, when, the, when, this, when the Great Eastern Trail board directors met last year, they had not scheduled to come to Kentucky. They was in Virginia, on the Virginia side. So we, we sent a representative of Pike County at that time with Paul Hopkins to their yearly meeting. And we said, why don't you use come through Kentucky? Why don't you hit Kentucky? And uh, as you come out of West Virginia, back over in this direction, why don't you come in and you're going to get in Virginia a little bit because part of that trail going up the mountain separating Kentucky and Virginia on Elkhorn Creek and Pike County, that uh, 
you you will be some in Virginia, but the biggest part of the trail, about 90 some percent, will be in Kentucky and in Pike County. Plus, you already have a trail. You already have an existing trail uh, right here, and use that trail. And they voted as a board at that meeting to come through Kentucky and in Pike County, which was a great access to us. The Great American Trail is a national trail, which a resolution was passed by the United States Congress in regard to this trail system in, in the eastern part of the United States, and it comes through central Appalachia. So we have, we have that trail system already in place, the Great American Trail, for walking. Then we go on to, we talk about the, then we have a river trail study, and it's, it's in all of these documents here. A river trail, the only river trail that we know about in this commonwealth, in Kentucky, has already been established in Pike County on the Tug Fort. Already, and, the, and they'll have a picture to show you. In regard, we've already, the Pike County has already built, and it's in, it is in use during the season on the Tug Fork, and it, it is at the Hatfield-McCoy Park. That's where you access the river. It is already being used. It was used this season, and so it will, it will be continue to be used in the future. But having said that, we are blessed to have Two rivers have one river, which is the Big Sandy, which has the Tug Fork, and which has the Levisa Fork, and which has the Russell Fork. We're blessed to, to, to have, have an opportunity to only have a trail system on Tug Fork, but we also have, have a committee in place to establish a trail system, and that committee is made up of people who ride the river with their, with their children. We have a person on our staff, Bobby Brennan, who is on that committee, Rusty Justice, Frank Dahlher, Mr. Smith, an attorney in town, and Reed Potter, I could go right and on, I know I'm not getting all of them. Mr. Ruth. Uh, yeah, Mr. Ruth from Elkhorn City. We know that the Area Development District, which is in Prestonsburg, Mrs. Runyon, they have a river tail project and program. But that river trail starts at the Floyd County line and runs to the end of the Johnson County line. It does not include us. So what we've done, we have partnership with the city of Pikeville. And we partnership with, and, and we have had meetings with the city, with the city manager and with, with their leadership in the city and with their staff. And we've established a trail on the Russell Fork that runs from Elkhorn City, I think it's Carson Islands, where you get into the, uh, the headwaters up there. It's at Carson Island, and then you come down, and I think you've got another uh, river entry. I think it's at, uh, at Draffin, at the existing bridge that crosses the river now, not where the new bridge will be built. But you, you get in, you access the river there. Then you have another location at Millard, underneath the Millard, the railroad bridge, on the other side. On the on the on on the nails, the, what we know as the nail side of the river, or over where the bush has the big tipple, it's on that side of the river. So we we have that already in place. County owns the property over there. The city moving on theirs has already established one down to the state new steakhouse. If you go down 23, look across, you'll see theirs already completed into the river. They're also studying to put another one up on the South Mayo Trail uh, near Food City in that particular area within the city limits. So we're a partnership with the city of Pikeville to certainly bring, and, uh, and I think that the city of Pikeville has a great opportunity, and I've told the people in the city, I think they have a great opportunity to, to later to bring and put through the cut through a tour boat that people would get on and you could ride them through the cut through. I think that that is a opportunity that the city ought to take advantage of uh, and, as a, and, and the city needs to do that. The county don't need to go and establish a, a uh, tour boat in the cut through. They need to go ahead and, and, and put in their planning to put a tour boat in the cut through. This cut through right now is the largest earth moving job 
in this hemisphere second only to the Panama Canal. That will draw tourism. Well, who, you can go to the top, and the city has done a great job in regard to that, but they need to go to the bottom where they really, really get a feel as you look up to that cut through. And that you get a feel and you understand as you ride that water why Pike County government virtually gave all the property in, in that hollow, which they call Bob Amos now. We virtually gave that to the city to stop the flooding in the city. I mean, that property, if you appraised it today, is worth probably $7 million. But back then, it only appraised for a million and three before the development. The county owned all of that property, every bit of it, uh, hundreds of acres. And we, we did virtually let the city have it to stop the flooding in the city. They have done a great job. Mayor Hanley's vision and the vision of people who succeeded him have done a great job in regard to what they've done on Bomb Amos as they know it now as the Bomb Amos property. So it is the Bomb Amos Park and property. So hopefully that we will continue to work on, and we are going to continue to work on this, this water trail system, the only one in the Commonwealth that we know about. And it, is, it, is, it has been brought to fruition already on the Tug Fort, already in existence, and already, already has uh, two, two pla three places that we know about between Elkhorn City and Pikeville, and others will be established and the city already has one in and has another one on the drawing board. So this, this water system is in place. It will come apart, and Charles Carlton and I have talked about what will happen in economic development and the money that can be generated from all, these, all the things that we are doing in regard to this trail system. We move on to, the, to another system, and that is the dirt bite system. And, and if we had time, we would go through and give you Martin County's plan. Martin County has a, con a conceptual plan in place at the uh, Martin County that stops at the Pike County border at the Lower Big Creek, Hatfield, Kentucky area. That dirt bike trail can be extended in the future up Big Creek for a period of time. We know who owns that property. They are a land holding company that owns several hundred acres that's in Martin County and in Pike County. We want to make that acreage available for the dirt bike trail on Lower Big Creek and it will be spaghetti trails hopefully on this property in Martin County and in Pike County owned by out-of-state ownership of a, of a land holding company. Hopefully and we'll, we'll work to make that a few reason. Then we talk about and everybody in the country knows about rails for trails. We have attempted over the years to, when, when I have been in leadership in Pike County, to take advantage of rails and trails. We tried to get the trail on Marbone, and it was, it was controlled at that time by two businessmen in Pikeville who had an option to buy it. And then the railroad company realized it had reversal clauses in it and had to go back to the a parse portion of it had to go back to the uh, later to the owners who owned the property back when the railroad company got the property. So rails to trails we've known about for years, but this is the first opportunity that we've had, the first opportunity that we've had. And, and that is located on, on this map from the up to the, <coughs> from the Letcher County line up where we, we up here in this county, Letcher County line, and down to Shelby Gap. Down to Shelby Gap. We've had three meetings within the last 30 to 40 days. We met with the company who controls the right-of-way, a, a coal company who controls the right-of-way to Shelby Gap. We have requested to their, and met with their council and one of, one of their officials, and we've asked that we, we be given this right of way or the right to use this right of way from the Letcher County line down for a bicycle and walking trail. Judge Ward in Letcher County, this would be a Letcher County project. Mike Cottle, one of the leaders in the community leaders in Letcher County, and Judge Ward and the mayor of Jenkins 
has put together a, a Rails for Trail program. We are working with them to become part of the Rails for Trails. Judge Ward and I, when we met in Louisville about three weeks ago, talked about multi-county cooperation. And we know that we just got the money, $300,000, for the Lecture County Physical Court and the Pike County Physical Court to do the study on 460. And I will, I will also, on this map, show you 460 goes over, of course, into this area. They, and, and we know that uh, as, as we do that study, that we're, we're going to be including in that study the, this program for bicycle and walking. Now, we, I have told you about from the Letcher County line, teaming up and partnershiping with Letcher County, which makes us eligible for multi-county funds to, to build the railroad bridges back in this particular area that has been removed. That has been removed by the coal company because they didn't want evidently the liability. And I know one of our magistrates, Chick Johnson, he said, I'm glad they tore it down because they give us part of the materials out of it. But now we're talking about bicycle trail and walking trail. So we hope and have asked for the partnership and cooperation of a major coal company, which is TECO. And hopefully, that, and they have been a good community partner in many other projects, and we hope they will be as gracious to the people of Pike County and the future of Pike County on economic development in regard to a trail, total trail system uh, as they have been in the past. So now that don't end the bicycle trail system. Back in the early 1900s before coal, and I have said this many times that the railroad that come up the Big Sandy that came in from West Virginia up the Big Sandy River didn't come up to get our coal to begin with. The Chatteroy Railroad was established to bring to get the timber out. Timber was our way of heating around the United States. Coal had not been, to say, discovered at that time. So what happened, then you had, how did you get it out of here if you had no railroad, you had no highway in the early 1900s? So you used your source. You had people who had vision back then. And that was, you had what's called the April Rise. Every year in April, even now, and during April, during around the, from the 15th to the end of April, you have a river rise in this part of central Appalachia. So what happened? They took the logs, stored them up on the level land next to the Big Sandy River and other rivers, and they waited till the, they tied them together. They built a chaney on the logs. My great-grandfather, had explained to me how that worked before his death as a, as a young boy sitting on a porch listening out him talk and I said, Paul, if they build a chaney and tied these logs together and they marked their logs so that when they got to Catlisburg where they would go to the Ohio River and that's where the companies out of primarily North Carolina and other places that came in and did our timbering in Central Appalachia. They had big lumber companies that came in and, 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 and took our lumber and, of course, got it out of here and made our money, much like the people from the Northeast, the millionaires, come in and got our coal and stole our coal also. And, and, and future generations had to pay the price of, of living in an area that's not developed. And, of course, we can go ahead and say that the reason that I proposed the coal severance tax in the early 70s was the fact that we had never got these out-of-state corporations, either lumber corporations or coal corporations, to bring any money back in to develop the central Appalachian, especially Pike County, yet we were mineral rich. So to go on with this, this type of, of a trail and, and to make sure that, that we are doing it, they, they brought timber out of what we know as Pond Creek, and they brought it to the head of Pond Creek, and they built a dinky track. A dinky track was a small engine using wood to, for the power, not coal, using wood to build that dinky track all the way from Pond Creek over to Johns Creek 
to get it over to the Tug Fork or over to this river over here. They, they came through the dinky track and they had to do that because there was logs at that time that was running down the Russell Fork and Levisa Fork and not the Tug at that time. So they had to get the logs over here. They put a dinky track in and been through it many times and since 1960s when I started traveling this county all over. The dinky track, the elevation on that track is uh, at, on that dinky track, it wasn't a powerful engine, it wasn't a big engine. But it but if they made the elevation so they could they could get it all the way across. We are going to turn that into a bicycle and walking trail. There are no houses on that trail. Ironically, we discovered many years ago that road is still listed as a state road. Now, there's no development on it. There's no development at all. There's no blacktop on it. But, and it's surprising to people that, and I know that Bobby Branham took a fellow through there uh, last year, and he explained to him this is state road. Years ago, all roads that connected in Pike County on one side and went to another road on the other side, those was all all state maintained roads. Well, for some reason, that is that is still a state maintained road. So we, uh, we are working with the Department of Transportation to get permission to put a trail in. And, it, and then, when we now have the Pike County Tourism, which we're no longer, the city decided to go on their own, which was fine, that's their decision. But now we have Pike County Tourism and when they did their new budget, they even have money in it for the signage on that road. So we're going to get that. We, and ironically, when we checked with the state who handles their rails to trail system, and I call the dinky track a rails to trail system, but it was a smaller track. Uh, we know the rail systems, the railroad, the rails, we know how tall they was and, and, and what diameter they was. But on the dinky track, they was real small rails, real small. So, uh, and, but it worked. It got, the, it got the wood out of here, got it to market, got it down to the Ohio River, or even to the Mississippi River, as they could take it down to Paducah on the Ohio River, and run the logs on the river. And, and it, it, it brought money in to the property owners, but the problem was the, the out-of-state people that come in and raped our forest and took these big trees that was in diameter unbelievable, virgin forest, took it out of here and took it to an, another state and left nothing for us to develop. So that has been worked on for years. That we now get some severance tax back. We get the 12%. But to go on in regard to the trail system, we have, the, we have a total trail system program, which is an economic program was to bring money into Pike County. Now one thing we don't want to happen, we want the local people who has the ability, we even have one magistrate when he retires who wants to build cabins himself on part of one of these trail systems. We want the people from Pike County to do what they've done over in West Virginia. They haven't brought anybody in from somewhere else. Somewhere else, they haven't brought them in. They haven't brought them in to, to build their system. And look what's happened economically and for economic development in that state on that one trail system in southern West Virginia. George, I was reading the uh, economic impact study for, <coughs> for the Hatfield-McCoy system and it said that um, one reason it's so popular is with the construction and the finishing of the construction of Corridor G. 119. Yes, which, which we also have over here, uh, you know, the, the new 119 stretch, and they, they credited the Corridor G construction with uh, reducing the isolation. People could get in now there and ride their Let's wheels. go over it one more time of what our plan is, has developed into, what all of this work has developed into, and I'm going to talk about phase one, that we go in this county and that we, we build probably two or three locations, not connect, but that we build and I call them spaghetti trail. But we get control of that property. Hopefully, we find property controlled 
uh, in, in the Phelps area and, and that we get some property under control that's owned by a large land company and we go there so we can certainly have the ability and have the state. State has no money to put in for development. We do have some money that's designated and has been laying there for a number of years that can be spent for nothing else but trails and we have economic development money available to us. We know that the, the United States Department of Transportation uh, funds, puts money to the Kentucky Department of Transportation, puts it into the Governor's Office of Local Government and then to us for a trail system under economic development. So yes, we are fortunate to be able to start our program. We are the only county of the 15 that has that amount of money, a, a amount of money available to go ahead. But how are we going to do that? How, how are we going to do that? We know that we're, we're, we're blessed again to have Summit Engineers, which is in three states. They have 50 employees out of 155. It has Pike County addresses. They, they uh, are in, in Lexington. They're, they're over in Virginia. But we're blessed to have them because they did the study in West, Southwest Virginia trail system. They did that study, which, which we'll work through them and they have knowledge. And it's Matt Elliott who's assigned with us for Summit, who is one of the experts in regard to trail system. And we will work with them to connect into that system. We are blessed again by having the fact that Bill Reed and what's the name of Spearhead his? Spearhead Trails. Spearhead Trails, who moved from West Virginia to not County Kentucky, our neighboring county, whom we border, and that he has the knowledge and who will be one of our consultants. With him will be Debbie Spencer, whom we just, Brandon, had a meeting with, yeah. with our trail committee uh, last week, first week before last. They are working on a proposal to us to move our trail, total trail system forward. Now, those existing counties, which there are seven of them presently, you got eight more with an interest of becoming part of the coalition of trails for Eastern Kentucky. But those, ses those seven are together by an interlocal agreement. Now, we feel, our county attorney's office feels, and, and others feel, and we did have a conference call some months ago with county attorneys from other counties trying to sort this out, how we could put a total coalition together. We're going to have to start again from scratch. And what we have together is an interlocal agreement on four-wheeler or ATV trails only. We have got to have this coalition to cover everything. Southwest Virginia was very wise and with the guidance, and I might add, when I talk about Debbie Spencer, she was the one that they was their consultant. Summit did their actual work, and we was we're blessed in this county to have pectometry. Pectometry was brought in here not for a trail system because we didn't buy part of a satellite for that. We bought part of a satellite and we rent or rent part of a satellite for the purpose of because we have devastating floods. We brought pectometry in here through, through our emergency management office, through Doug Tackett. And that means that they fly Pike County, they divide it off into sections. And if we have a devastating flood within 72 hours after the flood, they come and fly it again. It means that we have the technology. When the president, when I declare a disaster, the governor declares, and then the president declares, that they, they come into Pike County, we are the only county in the United States, that's what FEMA told us that they know about, that hands them a map marked with every house in the county that's reported damage. And they can locate that and can go in on the pictometry and shoot a picture of the house, tell them how far it is from a public road, telling them the square footage of the house and they get all the information and they have a jump start so that they can begin helping our people who's very resilient to build back after they've lost everything or almost everything in a flood. So we have pictometry for that. We're using it in our trail system. When they went out and shot our trail system that they have, have already shot, we already have 
in, we already have done, and I'll put on the map again, all of this area has been shot from the satellite. Uh, all this area right here in Pike County has been shot from the satellite. This, this area, leaving over in this area, coming across from Pond Creek into to Peter Creek into Elkhorn City. Elkhorn City has been very cooperative in regard. When we looked under the, the Jane Bashir and the, the Lieutenant Governor's program, what we did is we, we know that there are many cities and towns in the Commonwealth that passed ordinance said you can't get a four-wheeler on a street, city street. We had the problem working with Summit in regard to this study of getting us, getting us on to the rest of the county and not having to cross the four lane. We ended up having to go up in this area underneath the bridge, underneath the bridge up to Dorton. And I've got right here it is, the Dorton Trailhead. So we could go underneath the bridge and not have to cross the four lane and come out over into B5. Over into B5, which meant they had a long fork and then which would meet in the future, going tying in there to Letcher County and then tying into Knott County. The three counties, Letcher, Knott, and Pike, border. And they had a Marshall's Branch and they had a long fork. And, the, and, and B5 gets it. Elkhorn City governing body at that time passed a city ordinance welcoming four wheelers to their city, could use their streets and get through Elkhorn City. And, and, the, and again, we have our partnership with Pikeville in regard to the water trails. We had our partnership with the leadership in Elkhorn City on helping us get our, our ATV trail or four-wheeler trail on, on maps, on maps, on, on paper, and to, so we could move it forward. So our trail system is, is, a, is a hidden, hidden jewel of economic development for Pike County and the children and future generations of this county. We're not going to get it done. I tell people all the time, I won't be here for so many years, but if the Lord lets me stay here, we're going to get this in place so that in future years that we will have the best trail system in the United States of America and that the tourists will be flocking here from from the eastern part of the United States, which we are blessed again to be in an area in the United States that has the most population of this country to our north, northeast. So we, we look forward to, to and, and it, we are glad that we're, bit, we're able to, to push this trail program as part of an economic development program and under Charles Carlson, which is the community development director, and to make blend this in as we bring jobs into Pike County, this is a plus. As we talk to the presidents and the boards of these major corporations in America and the world that we have even met with, many of them, for the last year to talk about what's available to them in regard to outdoor recreation and the fact that we have that we have the Brake Center State Park, that we have the Fish Trap State Park, that we have the Pine Mountain State Park, and offer them all of these amenities as they come into this beautiful area, the beautiful mountain area of Central Appalachia and Pike County. So we, uh, we, are, we are continuing to work daily and going to continue to work to bring this to fruition, and we can't do that alone. We need to have the people to support what we're doing. We need to have the business community support what we're, we're doing. And we need, to, we need to have the cooperation of these other cities. And we do have it. And it is a great example of when people work together and when everybody's goal is the same and putting politics aside. They're not doing that in Washington. And, and we, we are certainly doing it here in Pike County, Kentucky, because we don't agree on everything, but we're going to work together. We, uh, you know, we, we, are in, we are Central Appalachia. And I say that when the fires company come here and, and they wanted to, offer, wanted to locate in this county, they, they wanted to locate in Pike County, they, uh, you know, they, 
they said, well, we, we want to locate here. When they got a hold of the power company, they wanted $5.7 million to build a power line that they had to have a power line that they had to have over top of the property. We said go to Gateway Park at Jenkins. Charles Carlton and I said go. We thought they was going to West Virginia. We thought they was going over there for, for many reasons. But th they ended up up there. We, we just dealing with a company. They came to us. We've been dealing with them. We thought that company had their eye. We know they had been to Prestonsburg, I mean, in, in, to another county, in Prestonsburg and others in the area, then looked at all of them. We thought they may go to Virginia. But no, we wanted to track them. We're, we're Pike County officials. We wanted to track them in Pike County or Pikeville. So it ended up, we withdrew from those negotiations because we couldn't get our figures to work. And that company's coming to Pikeville. So we worked together. We don't work against each other. We're not competitive. There are people in this county that wants to use the word that we're in competition. We're not in competition. We still are Pike County officials. We still like to buy local with our local people, with our businesses. Uh, I know I got a call recently from the city of Pikeville, and, and, and they said, would you, we want to do a program or a project on buy local. Would you help us? I said, yes, but I said the Ch Pike County Chamber of Commerce used to do that. So call over to their office. If they will do it, we'll become part of it. But they're not Pike County Chamber of Commerce anymore. They are, they can't have a buy local program. They're promoting the whole area. And, and that's their business. Again, we can't control what the chamber does. That's their business. We'll, we're working with the chamber. We meet with their director every month. We, we are open with everything we're doing with them. They're open with us, and we have our disagreements. Uh, I don't agree with the direction they've taken the chamber. They do. I wish them the best success. That's their decision. But we're going to work with them, and, but we're going to continue to look out for Pike County's benefit. Now, when Pike County thrives, this relationship we have with other counties, this 15, this 15 coalition, what we're doing with, with the, we own, we own a fourth of the park in Martin County. We own a portion of that with, with Floyd and Johnson and, and Martin County. The, the Gateway Park is owned by not Floyd and Pike and Letcher, four counties. So yes, we're going to continue that. We're going to continue, and what's good for Pike County is good for these other counties. Well, thank you, Judge. Uh, this has been the Pike County Report. I'm Brandon Roberts. On behalf of Judge Wayne T. Rutherford, thanks for watching.